Good evening, everybody. Today, my topic is, is going to be about establishing media alliance between the Abraham Accord countries to combat media polarization. So before I talk about media alliance, let us talk about the core problem of the polarization. What is the problem? We can see the, the main problem is basically driven out of the global mainstream media dominated by the, the ones in the United States and the United Kingdom which is full of disinformation, bias, and polarization. We can see also both Israel and Arab uh, Gulf countries mainly, as UAE and Bahrain, are faced with a great deal of attacks and disinformation. But each part has different kind of attacks. For example, in the Arab Gulf countries like UAE and Bahrain, they are faced with attacks that is over-exaggeration of human rights without taking into consideration the other, other main problems, like, for example, the, those who take advantage of human rights as political Islamists for their own political agenda. And they're using the human rights that are, that are supported by Western countries to, 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 to pressure these countries at the same time to fulfill their own power. This type of, uh, of usage and exploitation by the, those political Islamists are not quietly understood by the Western media, the, which is the, the liberal media, and, uh, and uh, that's what is causing the, the kind of bias and disinformation. The attack on, on Israel, on the other hand, is quite different. The, the focus is basically showing one type of attack and not showing the, uh, the other. For example, is showing the attack of the Israelis on, the, on uh, parties like, for, like Hamas, for example, without showing that Hamas has hit uh, the, the, uh, the civilians in Israel. Here, the image is, is basically showing Israel as the attacker and the aggressor. So in this terms, both Arab Gulf countries and, uh, and Israel are facing this kind of distortion of image among the public by the traditional media. So what, what, what should be done in terms of this kind of, uh, of bias and uh, disinformation? For instance, the foreign policy of the Obama administration was very different from the, the Trump administration. The Trump administration was opposed to, to the Iranian nuclear deal agreed by the Obama administration and opposes the Iranian interference in the Arab countries. The Trump uh, administration was uh, also opposed to the Muslim Brotherhood and has, uh, and has considered and designated as a terrorist organ organization. While the, uh, the Obama administration was supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, especially in what is called the Arab Spring. Now, the Biden administration is basically another kind of version of the Obama administration and trying to do almost the same thing as uh, uh, the same thing and to trying to undo all what has been done in the Trump administration. So here comes the confusion and here comes the inconsistency between one administration and the other uh, administration, between the Democrat and the Republican. And all of that is on the expense of the region. So instead of continuing what has been done by the Trump administration, and we see more peace deals, we went back to box number one, which is going back to the Iranian nuclear deal, and also going back to the same type of strategy to solve the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict, which is basically taking the agreement of the Palestinian Authority, which basically going to the unsolved mystery. So we see all of those political differences are reflected in the media. So the, the Democrat Party is reflected by the liberal um, mainstream media because the, lame, the, the, the mainstream media is basically dom dominated by the views of the liberal Democrats. So all the views of the Democrats are reflected in the liberal mainstream media, while the, the views of the, of the Conservative Party or the Republican Party is basically reflected in the, in the, uh, in the conservative media. And that might explain why Arab Gulf countries, for example, UAE or Bahrain, are more allied to the conservative media, while the, uh, the pro-political Islam or the anti-Semitic are, are much more pro to the mainstream media. And here comes what is called the polarization. One group goes to one side and another, go, and another group goes to another. So 
how we can face this kind of polarization? What is the solution of this polarization? One of the main tools that was used to, to combat this bias in the, and polarization in the mainstream media is that through using digital diplomacy. What is, the, what is the digital diplomacy? Digital diplomacy is the use of information, technology, communication, and social media to uh, practice public diplomacy activities and, uh, and, uh, and the tasks. What, ha what has changed here is not only the medium. It's only the medium, not the message. So the message is still the same. But the medium is changed. So instead of using the medium of the traditional media, like using the radio or the television, now, now the digital diplomacy or diplomats now are using social networks, so for example, Twitter, Facebook, and others. So uh, that's why we see now uh, both Arab foreign countries uh, or, or Arab foreign ministries and Israel foreign ministries uh, ministry are using the digital diplomacy. Regarding the Arab part, the main, the main uh, part or the main uh, reason for using it and when exactly the digital diplomacy was used intensively was basically after what is called the Arab Spring. The, those Arab countries found that, uh, that the Arab Spring was basically inf inflamed by using the social media and mainly like Twitter and Facebook and also WhatsApp. So they use, uh, the, the youth use all of these kind of tools to organize the protests. And those, those, uh, those protests were not, unfortunately, were not spontaneous or were not direct from the youth. They were exploited by opportun opportunist groups like the political Islamists uh, that use the, the anger of the youth to, for, to fulfill their own political agenda. And those political Islamists were actually influenced by external uh, parties and external influencers. So, and, and that's what made the Arab foreign ministries to take really a, a, a important consideration of the importance of digital diplomacy. The Israeli foreign ministry, uh, ministry were using digital diplomacy for different reasons. The main reason of using digital diplomacy mainly to get closer to countries that are either hostile or have no diplomatic relations. So in order to get closer to them and to the public opinion, they, want to, they used the digital diplomacy. So one of the main comments that was said by the, was said actually by the director of Israel Digital Diplomacy Unit, uh, Yuram Murad, that he said that digital diplomacy enabled to uh, to uh, to be enabled to be less dependent on traditional gatekeeper uh, gatekeepers as newspapers uh, editors in terms of getting their message across. For instance. You can have a very successful viral campaign without bothering with getting through the, gate, uh, the traditional gatekeeper, uh, gatekeepers. Because if it is successful online, the gatekeeper in traditional media will write about it. A big campaign gets a lot of press, which may influence public opinion. And then you, uh, you center the sphere of the, of the policy and decision makers who are always attend to public opinion. So what, what he's trying to say here, and instead of the traditional media or the traditional gatekeepers that, uh, that are in, in control of the information, now those who are using the digital diplomacy and the online are, are, are in control of this information. And if it, is, if it gets successful, the traditional gatekeepers will be taking the information from the digital media or the digital diplomacy for, and they get the information and spread it. And here, here you have like less dependence on the traditional media and the traditional gatekeepers, which is a very important point. So with all the advantages of digital diplomacy, studies show that digital diplomacy by itself is insufficient. In, combat in combating the polarization and bias of the mainstream media. So what should be done? The, uh, there are several suggestions here um, that, that, uh, that can help in combating the bias and misinformation of the mainstream media. One of those uh, suggestions are uh, establishing joint media venture as a joint satellite news channel that includes, uh, for example, both Emiratis and Israelis to better, for better dialogue and mutual understanding among people. 
such channel would definitely require sophisticated management and carefully calculated investment. Another suggestion could be to combat this kind of misinformation and bias is launching a joint YouTube channel that, uh, that explore the hypocrisy of radical political Islamism as uh, advocates regimes to political Islam and groups as the Muslim Brotherhood. For instance, showing the differences between what they say in Arabic media compared to what they say in the English media. Uh, so mostly what they say in the, in the English media is basically talking about uh, tolerance and pluralism, while when we see them in the Arabic media, they're elevating violence and anti-Semitism. So all of these things should be shown in the, this kind of YouTube channel, a joint YouTube channel. Also, since the usage of social media, especially among the youth, is high, it is worth to emphasize on the social media to balance out the bias in the traditional media. Also, we saw how social media has played a huge role in building warm peace uh, due to its interactivity and engagement among people and across civil society. As a result of that, and, and something that is called uh, citizen diplomacy, which is basically kind of digital diplomacy, but among the ordinary, not among the diplomats only. So at this stage, it is important not only to qualify diplomats for communication diplomacy or, the, or communication uh, technology, but also national profession professionals, uh, the, the national professionals, the skills of these active users that are using cer certain social networks as those active users on Twitter or Facebook or any kind of social network that is so uh, active and popular among the youth, we can train them and, uh, and to use the, the activity of those younger, uh, younger professionals and use their skills to, uh, to basically influence the, the region and the, inter, and the international public opinion through, uh, through meaningful engagement. This is another kind of usage of the of effective usage of the social media. Regardless of all of those tools, what will make this media alliance successful is basically all of those Abraham Accord countries are driven by pragmatism, not ideologism. They are driven by prosperity and development for their, for their people, not by ideology. And that will make this Abraham Accord successful and will make, and will make this media alliance successful.